an assassination attempt, the Republican convention, a complete 180 in the Democratic presidential campaign. Add to that yesterday's historic global prisoner swap and today's economic, we'll call it rough day in the markets. And that's just been the last 20 days. Can any of that really tell us what may happen in November? Let's bring in Al Lichtman, presidential historian, distinguished professor at American University. Alan, you're known for, for your 13 keys uh, to predicting who's going to win the White House. You've correctly predicted nearly every presidential winner since 1984. Uh, not going to tick through all the keys here, but what stands out to you in terms of what's happened in the last three weeks, particularly as Kamala Harris has become the Democratic nominee? What is so amazing is how little has changed on the keys. The keys are the North Star. They're not affected by any of these campaign events. The keys tap into the structure of how presidential work elections work as votes up or down on the. Them out with Biden stepping down, they lose the incumbency key, but the Democrats finally got smart and united around Kamala Harris, and that means they preserve the contest key. So they've only lost one key, which still puts the Democrats in a good position for re-election. A lot would have to go wrong for them to lose, which I've been saying for months, and none of these campaign events change that whatsoever. You know, what's interesting is if you, if you spoke to Democrats, they felt like the president was in a bad position. Uh, clearly, the president kind of concluded that on some level as well when he decided uh, to drop out. You, you were saying the day before he dropped out, like the, based on your keys and how you're looking at the race, what you're saying about individual events not shifting things, that he had a very good chance to win. Absolutely, because he secured both the incumbency key and the contest key. Look, I'm not a physician. I'm not going to comment on his mental or physical health, which could operate outside the keys. But leaving that aside, he secures those two keys. That means six of the remaining 11 would have had to fall to predict his defeat. Extremely unlikely. Harris secures one of those two keys, but now five of the remaining 11 keys would have to fall to predict her defeat. Very unlikely. She's also help the Democrats on the third party key, making it less likely that people will look to uh, RFK Jr. And with Biden out of the campaign spotlight, that would make it less likely there's going to be any kind of massive social unrest through protests. You know, two of the keys are, are economy related, right? Short term and long term. We know the economy is number one issue for voters. Uh, the Biden campaign had a messaging issue. Or they thought it was a messaging issue. Uh, in talking about the economy, both the macro uh, numbers themselves, but also their accomplishments. Do you think the vice president and her team can do better on that front? The Democrats have been abysmal at messaging for a very long time, really going back to the Obama administration. You know, he was very successful, but the Democrats lost everything during the Obama years. I do think Harris has an opportunity to reset the conversation about the economy, and there's a lot that she could talk about in a positive way, but you got to boil it down to a simple, compelling message. Republicans have been great in that. Democrats have been terribly deficient. Before I let you go, I, I got to ask, because I've been following with interest, um, you and Nate Silver, the statistician known for his own elect uh, election forecasting, don't seem to get along, at least on social media. W what's, the, what's the deal with you guys? Really simple. The keys can fall into place early. In 2010, I predicted that Barack Obama would get reelected and that, you know, in a very difficult to prove to predict election. Out of the blue, a 30 page attack on me saying, you can't predict this early. Being a professor, I responded with my own 30 page response, which boiled down to the idea I can, but you can't because I tap into the structure of elections, you look at ephemeral polls, which are useless at this point. I think ultimately, Nate came around to agree with me. I wrote him a very nice email saying, let's write a joint article about how two different uh, predictors came around to the same viewpoint. Never heard a thing from him. He's a clerk. He just compiles polls, and then he comes up with these phony probabilities, which are not based on real probabilities. Hillary Clinton has a 78% chance or so to win. Then she loses, and he says, see, I told you she had a 20%, 22% chance 
to lose. He can never be right and he can never be wrong because he lives and dies with the ephemeral polls. It, it is a it is a very real beef on some level. Um, and Nate obviously has his forecast, uh, his modeling uh, newest version of it that came out as well a couple of days ago. Professor Alan Lickman, always appreciate your time, my friend. Thanks so much. Anytime, Phil. All right, Ashley Allison, you heard Alan Lickman. We didn't get like the, the official final prediction, but very clearly is leaning with his keys uh, in the Harris direction, it seems. Uh, what did you think of that? Well, I mean, if we took a snapshot right now, the momentum is definitely with the Harris campaign. I think rather than leaning into predictions, I just want to kind of celebrate what today means. It's the first time a woman and a woman of color, a black woman, is going to be at the top of the ticket. One of my icons, Shirley Chisholm, um, who I really went into politics learning about her. Um, she was only on the ballot in 14 states, but this time it's different. And so I think that may be in some of the predictions that this feels different than it has before. It feels different than 2016. But today is special. Um, and I, I hope all Americans can appreciate the progress that this country has had on a day like today. Shira, um, you know, Harrison, a running mate, they're scheduled to go on tour starting on Tuesday, I, I think. You mentioned she knows the importance of a governing partner, who she's going to be with. She's the vice president. <laughs> um, do you think we get the pick right before then? We're all trying to read tea leaves here. How do you think this works? I think we're either going to get it late Monday night or sometime on Tuesday. I don't know that she's going to come out and at the rally announce the candidate there. But the, the, the main key like time crunch that we have right now is the DNC delegates can continue voting until Monday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern. And so she's going to wait until that process finishes before she decides to, to announce her VP pick. I think it could be shortly, shortly thereafter, and I'm hoping that sources will tell me when exactly it's going to happen, as I think every reporter is. But I think we'll probably most likely see it Tuesday ahead of the rally in Philadelphia, which I'll be at. And, and Brian, where do you think this is coming, as a, as a politico, not as a yeah. partisan? Yeah, listen, I, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to have their moment. Uh, it's certainly, you know, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs. The introduction is going to be fine. But, yeah, I think at the end of the day, we're still, you know, just under 100 days out. You have plenty of time to sort of define this race. I think Kamala Harris is trying to sort of get her redefining moment. And Republicans are going to spend a lot of money, you know, defining her as they know her. I mean, she's, you know, from our standpoint, we feel that uh, her record with Biden isn't that much greater. And then, you, you know, Lickman talked about uh, the, the keys. At the, the end of the day, Lickman still thought, you know, Joe Biden was going to win because of all these keys. And uh, Joe Biden is no longer the nominee, so you have to sort of put credit where it shouldn't be due. Um, my appreciation to all of you guys. Have a great weekend. I, sources, if you were listening to Shira, she was making a very clear pitch there. Tell her <laughs> who it is, or me, one of the two. Please do. I'm going to be in Philly on Tuesday. Feel free to come up to me at the rally. Yeah, Any of that yeah. sort of stuff. It makes time. Just do it, guys. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks you so much too. for joining us.